Welcome to the eGPU in-depth reviews. Today I have with me a Razer Core X and boom shakalaka, look at this beautiful GPU. We're gonna be plugging this into a MacBook Pro 15 inch and seeing how well it rides. Now this is officially, according to all reviews, the number one eGPU to get. And it's there for a reason because, damn, look at the design, it looks sexy AF. It's got a nice, nice, beautiful 650 watt power supply. This can power a tank. This can power a 1080. This can power a 2080. A power a Radeon 7. And of course, it's spacious. It can fit a nice, big, fat GPU. It's sexy AF. I was so excited to plug this into my Mac. Unfortunately, I found out that the graphics card I'm using right now, the R9 390X, isn't Mac compatible. But there's a good stuff happening because it does work on boot camp. Yes, that's right, Windows Gaming works and I was so happy about it because as much as I love my 555X you know it's, it's good it's good it's good for the kind of games I play going to this 28 nanometer the best you can get back in 2015 it made my life very very happy we're playing Tomb Raider we're playing Wolfenstein we're playing all the games maximum resolution maximum everything and I was enjoying life so I'll plug in the HDMI just there and I've got my internal MacBook display running and my external monitor running, it's all in Windows. So Tomb Raider set it to ultimate quality. And I'm gonna turn off VSync so we get to see how fast this baby can go. Our average frame rate is 50.2, maximum 60, and our minimum is 38. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to a two meter Thunderbolt 3 cable and show you the performance differences between using the long cable and a short cable. To demonstrate the distance, I've moved the eGPU over here and I'm gonna be operating it from over here. So, of course, uh, I need to restart the computer for it to register. Restart. So the average speed here is 50 frames a second and the minimum frames a second is 38 and the maximum is 64. So it doesn't look like we've suffered any real performance penalty from switching from a 0.5 meter cable to a two meter cable in this uh, technology demonstration at least. I'm gonna try some more games to see how it's operating, but so far it's looking pretty good. Just gonna be trying out Soul Calibur 6, and I've got my eGPU all the way over there. Previously, when I ran this game on the Radeon Vega on the MacBook Pro, uh, it, feels, it feels a bit slow. But the graphics are better. Oh, the graphics are awesome, but it's, it feels slow. It couldn't do highest quality, it could only do medium. So I'm gonna see how high of quality I can get it using an R9. 390x. So put it on maximum quality. It is contrary to the internet, it is relatively quiet. Now it's not as quiet as the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. In fact, um, this eGPU over here, the OWC Helios 650FX, which I'll be reviewing very soon, that one has a, a pretty silent fan all over. It's actually temperature gazed, so if there is no temperature, there is no noise. But, to be honest, most of the noise that comes out of these units are based on the graphics cards. For example, this R9 390X, when it's going at its maximum fan speed, the whole neighbors are gonna hear it. There's nothing that's gonna stop that noise. So, noise is not that big of a concern because you can always get a two meter from the wall free cable and I've tested it one of those and they actually work. And I didn't actually notice any performance degradation compared to a 0.5 meter cable. That's pretty good. On the pros as well, compared to the Blackmagic eGPU, it actually works in boot camp. Like, there are some cravats, is that the word, what's the word? Now, there are some caveats. It is uh, interesting, the installation process. Just gonna check Windows update. And it's going ahead to download the R9 390 series drivers. So it says restarting your computer may help. Windows seems to be in a restarting loop. But I'll, I'll throw in the guide and show you how I did it. But the spoiler is, on my 15-inch MacBook Pro, 
I was able to install it and it worked fine. However, on my 13 inch, it just wouldn't boot up. And I think this is purely because I'm using a non-Mac compatible graphics card. However, I will be keeping a list of all the graphics cards that work fine in the description. And if anyone has any experience with graphics cards on a MacBook Pro 15 inch, 13 inch, please let me know which graphics card you're using with a comment below so we get some nice, juicy, meaty information out there for the community. All right, so I have to say, it's a great design. It's really easy to slot in, like just, when you look, at, look at it, look at this process. It's just, it's nice, it's beautiful. You just slot in like that, like that. You're ready, you're large, you're in charge. Just take it out, it's just fun. It feels like you're playing with a tank. This is a beautiful design, it's sexy, it's, uh, it's fun to use. But let, let's think about value. This guy, it comes with a one year warranty and that's uh, pretty good. For its price point, however, I've seen other eGPUs, for example, the OWC Helios over here. This guy's quieter and it has a three year warranty. So you're set for life for that one. Whereas this guy, if it breaks after a year, you're gonna have to be going down the whole consumer rights, it should be working angle. Hopefully, it wouldn't break. It seems like a very solidly constructed unit, but me. With age, I've learned that having a warranty, especially with the whole brand new Radeon 7 kind of graphics cards, you're gonna need it. And of course, I still say eGPUs are for advanced users. There's a whole load of gotchas when it comes to eGPUs. For example, it didn't work on my MacBook Pro 13 inch, but it works on my 15 inch. Windows Bootcamp requires your eGPU to be turned on before you boot into it. If you try to plug it in when it's already booted, it won't register, it will just go on maximum fan speed, so you need to constantly restart there. There you go. So according to Device Manager, my R9 390 is operational and my 555X isn't workable. But clearly I can see the internal display, but not the external display. I'm just gonna try restarting it with the eGPU turned on. Let's see what that does. There you go. I did experience some unresponsiveness in Windows. Just got a crash. For some reason, my computer's being unresponsive. Not sure why that is. I'm gonna just force, turn it off and turn it back on again. It only happened once, so hopefully that's, that's all right. And there's some weird stuff, for example, if you select to only display your external display and not the internal display, after booting into Windows, you'll just see the Windows logo on your internal display. Yeah, I still got this screen for some reason. You have to uh, re-enable your internal display and then disable it again for you to get a black screen. So I just keep mine on extended. Your MacBook Pro's internal display is ran on software rendering and doesn't use the 555X or Intel Iris graphics when the eGPU is turned on. One thing to note is that the eGPU can't power the internal display of a MacBook. So right now I'm trying to play Tomb Raider, but you can see that the internal display is running very slow. Yeah, look at that. Yeesh. Instead, the system resorts to Microsoft Basic Render Driver, which is which means CPU-based uh, software rendering. So it doesn't even use the Intel Iris or anything like that. And on Bootcamp on Mac, you can't unplug it and replug it back in. You need to always restart Windows to get it activated. So what I want to test here is what happens if I would turn off the eGPU while Windows is loaded and I've got an external display. Three, two, one. So I still can access my internal display, but my external display is off because the GPU is off. And what happens if I turn it back on? Will it reconnect? So if you turn it back on after you turn it off, it will only reconnect if you restart the computer in Windows. So I have to hit restart. So there's an application called AMD X Connect, and that tells you what application is using your external eGPU. So if I eject it, save to remove your graphics card. All right. And if I plug it back in, will it remember it? So it looks like once you disconnect the eGPU on Windows anyway, you need to restart Windows in order for it to reconnect back to your external display and be able to utilize it. Now, this 
is all MacBook Pro related. I'm sure on other Windows computers, I've seen that one, you can unplug it and replug it. And AMD do provide an application to allow you to eject the eGPU, but nonetheless, when you replug it in on a MacBook Pro, you need to restart it for it to be activated. And of course, if you use a non-Mac compatible graphics card, it won't register on Mac. So if you do plug in an incompatible GPU, after it starts up, what you'll get is one of these little icons, but it'll say no removable GPU, and then the icon will disappear. There you go. You just, you can't use it, which is disappointing. It's not like you can install drivers and get it running that way. On the good news though, if you do, for example, turn off your eGPU or unplug the cable, Windows will work. It will just regress back to your internal display and uh, that's pretty good. So you, you won't lose your Mac, you won't have to force turn it off or that kind of stuff. But overall, there is a few gotchas still left in the whole eGPU world, but I'm very excited with the performance this unlocks and I'm very happy that it actually worked with a two meter cable. So it's possible to use one of these units, maybe set your BIOS to the quiet one. Can't do that on Radeon 7, but you know, get a Vega 64 set on quiet mode and you know, you're set for life, you're happy. Upgrade this GPU, it's so easy. You just unscrew this thing. Unscrew this over here, look at this, look at this, I'm unscrewing it, unscrew this, and there's a little button over here underneath, and look, I've got a brand new GPU, look at that, I'll plug it back in, it's, it's just so simple, you can throw it away, you can have fun with it, and it looks like a tank, look at this, this is the most fun I've ever had, look at, look at that, eGPU away, plug it in, have some fun in life, that's it. So right, what do you guys think? Is this the best eGPU to get? Well, stay tuned because I got a lot more eGPU content. I'm getting some brand new graphics cards. I'm getting more eGPU units. So let me know what you think, what you'd like me to test. I personally plan on getting some Unreal Engine out of the box, some 3D, some Maya, some, my friend's Final Cut. You can't have an eGPU review without reviewing Final Cut. That's what they pay the internet for. All right, take care, stay healthy.